In this video, we'll use Python to automatically update a sketch, allowing you to alter extrusions, pads, pockets, etc. by updating a list, running the macro, and rendering the result back to the screen, allowing you to easily update items in your sketch and modifying them as you desire. We'll be exploring for loop, tuple collections, and list collections to dynamically create these objects. So this is a like a too long dim read short version of the two videos that I put up regarding how to use lists, tuples, and also the video on a for loop and automatically place those coordinates as circles on a piece of stock and pad or pocket those. So what we first do is we create a new document and we make sure that our Python console and the report view are actually in view. So we've got to view panels, Python console and view panels report view. And I'm just going to right click and clear these. So we're nice and nice and clean. So go to your drop down and go to pick your workbench which it will be the part design and we'll hit a create body create sketch and I'll just pick the X Y plane and now what we're going to do is actually just create a circle on here because I want to show you something so watch this Python console down here if we create a circle you'll get a command for here that actually allows you to use this command in Python to actually create this circle. And if you look at the command, if you look at the vector, this is an XY vector. Let me just get this on screen. XYZ vector. Obviously it's sketch, so one of these can be zero. So this one here, minus 12. And if you look at this point here, let's hit escape so I get my mouse point back. On. There we go. Oops. Click on that that point on the circle. Minus twelve point eight five and minus five. So minus twelve point eight five and minus five. So that there is actually how to create a item in Sketcher via code. So we can actually copy that into our macro. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Now we need a new macro. Macro macros. Create new and just call it what you want okay, by list I'm going to call it okay that now I'm in new macro and I can actually start um, coding in here so the first thing we need is our list and I'm going to use a variable called LST and then I'm going to populate that list with a series of coordinates and they're going to be in, t in a, a type called a tuple now a tuple, or a tuple is, is basically if I add an XY coordinate, say I've, I want to do plot something, a coordinate of 12, comma, 45. So 12 along and 45 down, XY. And we just put bracket around those. And that is a tuple. And a tuple can be Etc. So everything in that bracket is a tuple. So if we were to do an X, Y, Z, obviously we only have three in there. So the word tuple is multiple. So it's multiple values. So I'm going to just go for 12 and 45 in there as a coordinate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list. So let's get rid of that. Put LST equals. Now, now lists are it's an array or a collection of items. So it can be a collection of integers, can be a collection of tuples, which we want. So to define a list, put LST or whatever you want to call it. This can be anything you want. And then in there, we'll open a bracket and we start adding our, our tuples. So tuple is a bracket. And I want to play something at four, five. And I'm going to put another, Closing that bracket, I'm going to put another com a comma in there, 
and then I'm going to have one at 8, 9, Ooh, 8, 9, close bracket, and I'm going to have three coordinates in here, 3, 3. Remembering to close the bracket on there, so I've got a list with three items in that list, and each of those three items are a tuple that have an x, y coordinate. So I'm going to place a circle at 4, 5, a circle at 8, 9, and a circle at 3, 3. Next we use a for loop. So now I've got those, now I need to step through those. Um, so we use a for loop. And then we have to define a variable. So I'm going to call the variable called. So that allows me to actually use that variable in my loop and what I'm going to say is called in and then you actually place a collection you want to actually check and then that is obviously LST there we go now use a colon there hit enter and press tab that means that we're going to be actually using this for loop to actually traverse the list which is this one and each one item it comes in in contact with in there each item it picks up it will actually take that item and place it into the cord so we can actually use that cord and to prove that I'm going to use the word print or the command print cord ok that's all good now if I watch my report view if I hit, hit the um, run macro button which is the little play icon up here you can see it's traversed this list which is great because we can now actually go through this list and actually create those items on screen. So remember we actually, when we placed a item on the screen, we saw in the Python console the command. So this command here actually allows you to actually place a circle on the screen in the Sketcher because we was in the Sketcher workbench. So I'll grab that command and paste it in here now make sure this again is tabbed over because it's part of the actual loop itself so app.active.sketch.addGeometry so we're adding a geometry to our sketch and we're adding a part.circle and here's our vector now this is where you want to put the chord in now to access the first and second part of the tuple the coordinate you'll need to actually define an index so tuples are zero based index which means they start from zero so if you have a tuple of 4 comma 5 show down here 4 comma 5 this index will be zero and this index will be one so I can specify zero to actually get the four out and I can specify I one to get the five out so we can do that by going into our vector and the first point of call is the x-axis which is this one and I'm going to write near called so we're using the called from the four open square bracket and this is where you define the index so zero so what I'm saying is going into the called which has been picked up from our four so the first time through it goes through goes four called in list so it looks in the list picks up the first one because it's the first time round so called at this point is equal to 4.5 so this is the first time in so that's equal to 4.5 when it gets to here it's actually picking out the called and actually saying pass me back the item in the called at zero index so there's a little pointer that points to 4 comma 5 and it says right each of those items in there which are, which are separated by a comma pick me up the one at location 0 which is the first location which is 4 so that point it equals 4 and we can do the same for our Y location so that's called that's called 1 
and that will place it on screen now there is another thing we need to do is because if I run this now what will happen so this is my unnamed one my document so if I run this now we get an error and that is so I've got an error down here and that is because I've accidentally deleted the bracket let's try that now so that has now worked so you can see it's done its job down here but if you looked at unnamed document the actual document works it's got nothing on screen but if you hit edit refresh and when I hit refresh watch what happens down here as well so our items are placed on screen but we've got this app.activedocument.recompute that tells the system to refresh and I'll need that in my code so I can copy that control C go to the code and create a new line now I'm not going to do it for if I tabbed over and placed it here that will do it for every one of these items going going through make sure you haven't got space on the on the beginning of that because it will fail so that will actually do it for every every single item but I don't need to do it I just need to do it last so if I put it at the beginning in line of the four so everything indented will be part of this for loop so this will be looping around until we end our list because we're doing called in list so if we run out of items then it drops down to this line which is outside the for loop and that just updates the screen so I'll show you that let's get rid of these go back hit the execute and there you go all in line now I'm going to move this one and have a look where that is 1040 so I'm just going to move these in line and take that so minus 10 4 so we've got minus 10 4 minus 1 3 9 so minus 1 4 and that one is minus 9 minus 4 so let's put those in so that will place them in this pattern let's get rid of that execute that and you can see it's placed them in that pattern there I'm going to show you how useful this can be so I'm going to place a piece of uh, base stock down and we're going to actually pad or pocket these into the base stock and then later we're going to change the configuration of the holes on that piece of base stock uh, via the macro delete those items and just run the macro again and then we don't have to worry about actually repadding or repocketing um, it will all be done for us so there's two ways I'm going to show you this I mean one way we can actually do it if I just wanted a simple pocket in these uh, we can keep our sketch open and just place our base stock around here and then close our sketch and create the pocket there let's give it two meters two millimeters sorry okay that so that's done um, if I wanted to change that I can double click on my sketch get rid of the holes delete those jump back into here change something say uh, minus eight zero mm, minus three okay so nothing there at the moment if I run that they are in different uh, configuration now slightly different configuration and then just close that and there they are all also it all done so that's that's one way of doing it so what I'm going to show you now is actually combining that with another sketch um, so I'm going to actually get rid of my square piece of base stock that I've placed down and instead of using this sketch for the base stock as well I'm going to actually create a new sketch so let's close out that sketch so we've got our pad so it's saying error so let's move the sketch out
delete the pad. So we've got our sketch there and our sketch one that I've created. So I was in the body, I've just got rid of that sketch one. I've created a new sketch in there, XY plane, okay. And now I'm going to create our piece of stock there, close that. And then I can actually use that piece of stock by doing our pad on there, giving it a piece of uh, arbitrary depth. And then we'll flip this over. And you can see our sketch is on the bottom, but I actually want it on this face here. So I can actually click on that sketch, which has been highlighted. Click the map mode and actually select the face. And you can see it's sitting there now. Okay that and do our pad or pocket on there. So I'm gonna go for a pad on there. Oops, drop that cancel that one. Let's pick the right one, that one there go for a pad on those like so so that's padded two millimeters okay that and again the same applies if I go to my sketch that I did the pad with uh, that one there if I go to that one and delete each of these that pad will be an error now uh, it's not going to refresh because that's in error that's okay if we go over to our part design and run that our pads no longer in error so we should see that we have our items there. So if we go into there, delete those, come back into here, make some changes. Um, six and twelve. So just run that, and there you go. Those are all padded nicely. So there's an example of actually at using Python to create a macro to actually edit your workflow on the fly with the list, the tuple, and the for loop. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. There's a longer video on these, which is divided into two, and you'll be able to find those on my channel, and I'll put the link into the show notes so you can actually uh, go there and have a look, and that takes you into a bit more in-depth of those uh, those two and also there's a project coming up regarding using an image to actually create an image onto your piece of work in pads or pockets whatever you want and also you can actually choose the shape you want as well okay so hope you enjoyed hope it was useful and i'll see you again soon if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my site and also i have a ko-fi site um where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.